Hi everyone and welcome to my carving and sculpting a blithe faceplate. Materials you will need. Blythe faceplate, wood carving tools, exacto knife, dremel, and dremel bits. You will also need sandpaper 320 grit to 1500 grit, files with rounded and flat ends, good lighting, pencil or watercolor pencil. Here are some images of the tools so that you know what to get. And the sandpaper, you will find that you will go back and forth between sandpaper sizes or grid size. And you will see me do that later. To begin, I draw the shapes that I want carved, especially the lips. I draw exactly how I want the lips to look. So, and that will help me with carving and sanding staying on track of what I want it to look like. I'm using the X-Acto knife to cut and scrape away some of the areas. First thing you do is you make a, a base to continue carving on. This is a Dremel, very thin Dremel bit, sharp. You're going to go around the nose if you prefer, you can draw around the nose also. You'll see that I do that a little bit later also. Go all around the bottom part of the nose. And you're also going to trace the lips. All those lines that I drew on the lips, I'm going to trace them with the Dremel. I have this on low speed and very gentle touch. It's better to do it little by little. big carved area that then you cannot fix. You should always start with uh, a cheap Blythe faceplate that you could buy on um, AliExpress is a great place where I buy mine so that you can just practice and get started. If you do icy dolls you'll notice it's a little different in thicknesses as well as pull-up dolls. I love the ICs for the mouths because they seem to have more plastic in that section. Okay, now here I am tracing the lips. Making that line all around the lips. A little ball in the middle. I want that to stick out. Okay, this is a carving tool and has a rounded end. I really love this one for smoothing out. The carving around the nose. This is a very small Dremel ball and I'm going to go around the nose again with this and around the lips. I still have the drawing there to guide me but when it does go away I will redraw it if I need to. your lips could come out lopsided or weird. Go around the lips with the little ball and in the center. And you're going to do this again little by little. You can carve it out with the X-Acto knife and then go back with the Dremel. They sell very different size Dremel balls. I have every size basically. But now you're just doing the fine, basically outlining of what you're going to continue to carve. This is a 320 grit sponge sander. And I like to sand in between to get things smooth so I can continue to work on that area. And it brings it out and you can see how it's coming along. Notice that it has an end that does not have sandpaper on it. This is great to use around the lips and the nose. If there's a place you don't want to sand, then you put that section up against where there is no sandpaper. So I love it for the nose. Otherwise, the nose will go away as you sand and you don't want that to happen. I am using that part that I just explained. You 
can get these at any hardware store. They're available everywhere, even online. Okay, now I'm going to carve in a little bit deeper under the lip, between the lip and the chin, because I want a little indentation in there, or a crease, a nice little crease. And I scrape to smooth it. I'm really sorry that this is like a narrow view. I'm still getting used to how to film tutorials so they come out full screen and the next one you will see will be better. When you're carving in like this, please be careful. Be vigilant of where your other hand is. Um, I have cut myself to the point where I had to go to the emergency room. It was not pretty. So just be careful. You can always wear protective gloves. They sell those either at hardware stores or at craft stores. But if you work slow, this is very fast. This is sped up, so this is not how fast I work. If you work slow and you're paying attention to where your hands are, you should be fine. Okay, still scraping around the nose. You're bringing that down little by little. Don't rush it. And notice how whatever I do to one side, I do to the other, because I want it to be even. I don't want to forget to do one side. I want everything to be fairly similar on both sides. Faces are not symmetrical perfectly, but you do want it to be uh, fairly similar on both sides. I was using my wood carving tools for this, but I've noticed that that X-Acto knife really works nicely for me. This is a rounded file, and I'm just going over the parts that I carved, smoothing them out a bit so they're not so sharp. This is the same grit sandpaper, but it's just a flat, flat sheet. This will last you forever because you use it in little squares like I'm doing here, and you can get into the thick, little tiny areas. Notice that I'm sanding in a round fashion or a round movement. I don't do this every time, but do it where you can. It will come out smoother and you won't have lines from the sandpaper. I did carve the eyes and I don't think I showed that in this video, but basically I just made them a little flatter on the bottom and made those little ends have. So you're going to alternate between the lowest grit sandpaper all the way up to 1500. I start with the lower grit. I even have 150 um, just to get everything going. Okay, This is a smoother one. This is 800. Fold it and do the same thing, nice little circles. Be very patient, it takes a while to sand this. There is a lot of sanding involved. And I'm not done with the carving yet, but I'm just sanding it down, seeing what I've got so far. I do take a lot of pictures in between because with your naked eye, your Blythe faceplate will look perfect when it's not. And um, if you take a picture or you look at it in a mirror, you will see the flaws you need to correct a little easier. It's kind of like someone else looking at your Blythe faceplate. This is why I post a lot of pictures on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter. I just post them as I go along. Back to the X-Acto knife carving under, and then back to the Dremel. I also use a very big round Dremel ball right above the nose to get that little indentation. And I think I didn't film that, but I have already done a little bit of it here. Now I'm making dimples. I thought if she's smiling, she should have some cute dimples. And carving deeper into the lip to have that set little slight separation there. I 
again, everything slowly. I look at photos. I have photos of babies and children on Pinterest and Blythe face plates that I've done before. Other people's Blythe face plates to get ideas. Now I'm drawing in the dimples. I'm gonna give her a smirk. I think that would be cute. A little mischievous smirk. The smile goes out all the way to almost the center of the eyes. You can always make them smaller, especially if there's a pucker or another uh, expression that you want to make. But if you keep that in mind, then your lips won't be so tiny. Again, carving from the sides, bring that down a little. This is what I have so far. I took this picture so I could see. And then I draw in the lips again and the little lines I want to make on the lips. Personally, I like drawing it because it keeps me on track of where I want the lines to be. Otherwise, I kind of, it's hard to see them if they're not drawn in for me, personally. So you're going to draw in the little lines with a very light touch. You could also do this with a carving tool. If you're a beginner, you might want to do the whole thing with carving tools first. The Dremel does take some getting used to, because if you put too much pressure, too much speed, it'll just go right through the plastic. Notice how I use the tip and the side of the Dremel bit. And start at the edge of the lip, between the lips. That's where it's going to be deeper. You don't want to overdo this, be careful. This is what I have so far. I took another picture to see my progress. And then back to sanding, back to the 800. circles around the nose. I try to do circles, but sometimes it's not easy because the shape of that nostrils and nose. Notice I did the philtrum with a bigger circle Dremel. I did that right there where I'm sanding now. And I thought I filmed that, but somehow it mysteriously disappeared. That just basically you're gonna Dremel right in the middle. You can also use a carving tool. But the Dremel does it very nicely and smoothly. Now I'm gonna to go to a thousand. I'm not gonna to get too excited because I know even though I'm at the thousand, I may probably go have to go back to the lower grits and do some more carving. You have to be willing to be very patient and not rush. Some people do multiple face plates at the same time. I kind of have a hard time doing that. I like to focus on one at a time. That's all preference. So basically from here on, you're gonna sand, sand, and sand some more. And if you find any rough areas, you're gonna go back to the 320 and back to the 800, then back to the 1000, then to the 1500. So you get it very, very smooth. And you're gonna see a picture I took at the end I'm pretty happy with. Doesn't mean before I do the face up, I might not go back and sand some more. Sometimes as you're doing the face up, you'll see something you couldn't notice when the uh, pastels were not on the face. And see there I have a little, little hole that I left there. So I went back to the 320. Sand, sand, sand. and you can't rush it this is the part on well, the part I don't like so much but you have to do it what choice do you have you want it to have a nice blithe face you got to do a lot of sanding turn your face when you're doing it too. make sure you've got all angles
And there you go, that's my finished. And next time, join me for the face up. <laughs>